What's going on here gamers, today we're going to be jumping into some more Diablo 4, I've put a nice early game build for the Rogue together that's a lot of fun to play and absolutely tears through the content, so if that interests you, then stay tuned, that's coming up next. Welcome back everybody, today we're going to be looking at the Rogue class, I've tried to put a build together that's very easy to assemble, a lot of fun to play and absolutely devastates the early game content. I've been trying out a few skills, putting a few things together, but ultimately I found this by far the best and enables you to tackle all of the toughest enemies as well as absolutely decimate big mobs. Now as always if this helps you out a like would be super appreciated and if you'd like to see more content from me then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon. But for now, I'm going to chuck on a little bit of content showing you exactly what this rogue's all about. And remember, this guy is completely unoptimized. You can get him to hit much harder than this. This was just wearing standard items I picked up along the way, as well as chucking on a few aspects that I think will really help you out. Right, so hopefully from that footage you can see that this is a lot of fun to play. It can tear whole groups of enemies apart very easily, and for an early game build, it's probably one of the strongest I've played personally. So if I jump over to his ability points, now remember I may have a few more because I've been playing as a lot of other classes, unlocked quite a bit of my Renan and such, so if you haven't got these points, don't worry, just spec in whatever you have available. But the first one you're going to want to pick up is definitely going to be Puncher. Puncher is just a really nice easy one to use and it's going to help us to get that vulnerable when we get into its later nodes. You're going to throw blades a short distance and it's going to deal a set amount of damage as well as being able to slow when it hits those critical strikes. Picking up the enhanced node and you're going to be able to gain 2 energy when Puncher damages a crowd controlled enemy, which you're going to have very often. Over from here, another great one, Fundamental Puncher. Puncher now throws 3 blades in the spread, each dealing 35% of its base damage, but the main thing when at least 2 blades are hitting an enemy is going to make them vulnerable for 2 seconds. Anytime you can get vulnerable in your build you should do it, because you're going to be taking massive advantage of that later on. Jumping down from here, and for our core skill, we're going to go straight into Flurry. Now I know if you've seen anything about Rogue, every single person has probably told you to pick up Twisting Blades. I tried this and early game I didn't think it was the best. You're probably going to need some aspects to really make this shine, so I'd pick up one of the others. I found that Rapid Fire was also quite a nice one, but ultimately we're going to go with Flurry because it's probably the best for picking up early on. Remember, I've put 4 points into this, you're going to want to be able to put as many in this as possible, but if you haven't got that many points available, then just put one in for the moment in order to enable it. For its enhanced node, we've got enhanced flurry. Each time flurry damages a crowd control or vulnerable enemy, you are healed for 1% of your maximum life, up to 12% maximum life per cast. The rogue class is squish, squish, squishy, so having a way to be able to generate some health is definitely worth your time. And this works absolutely ideal with an aspect we'll be putting on this build. Just over from here and the improved flurry, if it hits any vulnerable enemy, it's going to make all enemies hit by that cast vulnerable for 3 seconds. 3 seconds of vulnerable is really good and it's usually enough time for you to completely tear down those enemies. Jumping down from here and going on to our agility skills, 
I found that one of the best ones is going to be your shadow step. You're going to need some form of unstoppable in your build somewhere, this one's really nice, it's on quite a low cooldown so it's well worth having. You're going to become unstoppable and quickly move through the shadows to stab your victim from behind, dealing quite a high amount of damage. You're also going to gain 50% increased movement speed for 2 seconds. If we grab the enhanced node, damaging an enemy with shadow step increases your critical strike chance against them by 8% for 3 seconds. And finally, Discipline Shadow Step. Shadow Step's cooldown is reduced by 3 seconds when it damages an enemy you have not hit with Shadow Step in the last 4 seconds. Now don't worry about points you see just over here in Caltrops or down here, we haven't actually put anything in this, I've just got random allocation on my gear. The other one you're going to want is however this one right here, and that's going to be your Weapon Mastery. Gain a bonus when attacking in based on the weapon type you're using. Daggers are going to give you a set amount which is 10% increased damage to healthy targets. Your sword is going to give you 6% increased overall damage. Bows we're not worrying about too much because this is more of a close range build but ultimately you're going to be putting on whatever's the best for your character especially through leveling that's just going to be whatever gear has the best stats on it or modifiers. Just down from here, something you pretty much have to pick up in any single rogue build, and that's going to be Dark Shroud. This is going to surround yourself with up to 5 protective shadows and gain 8% damage reduction per active shadow. Like I said, the rogue is very squishy, anytime you can mitigate a bit of damage it's well worth putting into your build and this one's pretty much essential all the way through the game. Now each time you take direct damage, that damage is reduced but a shadow is consumed however. The first enhanced node means now you have a 10% chance for one of them not to be consumed when you get hit. And the one we're going to be picking up is going to be subverting Dark Shroud. Each active shadow from Dark Shroud grants you 4% increased movement speed. This is just really good early game in order to pick it up, move around faster, get through the dungeons, get through the content, but if you were going for the ideal amount of damage, you'd very possibly pick this one up, which is going to be when you have at least 4 active, you're going to gain 8% critical strike chance. I found, especially early, they go down very often, I was getting hit all over the place because this is a very close range build, so stick with the movement speed for this one overall. Also for our other subterfuge skill, we're going to be going with a Poison Trap, Place a trap that arms after 1.25 seconds, it activates when an enemy moves within range, applying a nice amount of damage over a 9 second window. And the cool thing about this, if you really did want to, you can set up up to 4 traps at once. So if you knew there was an enemy that you were trying to lure into them, or there's a big boss going to be appearing, this works out really nice. For its enhanced poison trap, poison trap knocks down enemies for 1.55 seconds when it activates. And just down from here, subverting poison trap, you deal 10% increased poison damage to enemies standing inside your poison trap. Over from here, you're going to want to pick up exploit, that's going to be really good because it's going to mean you get a lot of extra damage anytime you're hitting those enemies whenever they're healthy or injured, which is going to be most of the time. And down from here, you deal 9% increased damage to vulnerable enemies. Remember, if you can't put quite as many points into these or you want to pick them up later on, that's completely fine. Make sure you pick up the main core skills first. Down from here, and something that some people will probably hate about this build, I'm not going to be going with any imbuement skills. These are amazing, everyone will be taking these by endgame, but for this build, especially through leveling, I found it was best to leave these off and go with something else. And that something else is going to be one of our ultimate skills. That's this one just over here, Death Trap. Place a trap that arms after 1.25 seconds, it activates when an enemy moves within range, dealing a total amount of 1136 to 1389 damage. Remember this will go up, it will go down depending on your build, I have just got random chucked on gear so if you're really trying with your build this will go up massively. But for its enhanced node, this is a really cool one, Prime Death Trap, enemies are pulled into Death Trap when it activates, kind of bringing them into the middle allowing your flurry to work even better because you're going to be hitting them all in a nice area effect because of what we got going on in our build. And finally Supreme Death Trap, if Death Trap kills an enemy its cooldown is reduced by 10 seconds. This, along with some other things we're doing with our build, means we have Death Trap up very, very often. It's really cool to see, and it's going to make it one of the fastest to use ultimates in the game. Just down from here, we've got Aftermath. After using an ultimate skill, restore 25 energy. 
Like I said, we're getting it back quite often. It's well worth putting into this, but if you don't have the points available, probably leave this node alone till later on. Then again, we've got Adrenaline Rush. Whilst moving, you gain 5% increased energy regeneration. I really like this. It means that you're going to be going into battles with very full energy most of the time, and it just makes getting in, doing a nice amount of damage very easy. And lastly, going over to our passive, we're going to be going all the way over to the right hand side here to exposure. Dealing direct damage to an enemy affected by a trap skill has up to a 25% chance to reduce the active cooldowns of your trap skills overall. Now you're able to see what we're doing, basically we've got two trap skills on, meaning we're ultimate and our poison one comes back very often. Drop a cluster of exploding stun grenades that deal 181 to 222 total physical damage and stuns enemies for 0.5 seconds. I found this to be by far the best passive to chuck on because we've got those two traps going on their build, drop them on the floor and then nuke everything with our flurry, enabling us to melt enemies that otherwise would have been a bit tricky. Going over to the specialisations and the first one you're going to pick up is going to be the one we're actually using and that's going to be your combo points. Your basic skills now generate combo points, core skills are going to consume combo points for additional effects. As soon as you get the quest, make sure you do it for your rogue. I believe it's probably around about level 15. I'll chuck it on screen if I'm wrong, but you're going to want to get that priority quest done in order to dish out a lot more damage. Now going over to the character, and like I said, I do not have the best gear on. I have just run for a few dungeons, chucked on a few of the rares in order to put a few aspects on. I'm going to chuck a few of the stats that you should be aiming for over on the left hand side. But remember, when you're gearing up through leveling, you're just going to be putting on whatever you can when you're finding higher level tiered gear and hoping that the stats and modifiers are nice on it. In general though, crit damage, crit chance, vulnerable, and because of how our build set up, close range are all going to be absolutely amazing. Again if you can find ranks extra to flurry on your gloves that's really going to help out as well as if you can pick anything up that's got additional damage to poisoned enemies. Like I said mine is far from the best gear I'm showing it from a beginner's perspective but a few things you will want to do will be to make sure you open up the occultist as early as possible and put in a few of these aspects in your build as they're really going to help it to shine. The first one is going to be this one right here, damage and melee enemy grants you a barrier absorbing up to a set amount of damage for 10 seconds. This can only happen once every 30 seconds. Anytime you can get some additional mitigation in your build is well worth doing for the rogue class and barrier is actually really good on pretty much every class. One that you may well want to invest in as well is going to be this aspect right here and that's going to be the ghost walker aspect. While unstoppable and for 4 seconds after you gain gen you gain 10% movement speed and can move freely through your enemies. This is just going to help you in case you get trapped or you need to get out of an area and it's just going to make your life a little bit easier overall. The main one you're going to want above anything, one that you should 100% get will be this one right here and that's going to be flurry damages enemies in a circle around you and deals a set amount of increased damage. Put this on your two hander as it's going to give you double the amount of damage and remember you can pick this up very early right in Fractured Peaks so you should grab it as fast as you can. Lastly another one you may want, it is not essential by any means but if you find yourself sometimes missing the basics before you're going into your flurries or you just want to make your build a little bit easier this one is going to mean dealing direct damage to enemies affected by your trap skills has between a 30-50% to 50 chance to make them vulnerable for 3 seconds. We've got a lot of vulnerable going on in the build anyway, so you don't 100% need this, but if you find yourself sometimes missing the basics because you've got full energy and you're going in using your flurry straight away after your trap skills, this may well be something you want to put in your build just so that you've always got vulnerable going on even if you're missing your rotations and stuff. Remember your main stat for rogue is going to be your dexterity, this is the one you're going to want to focus on most in order to boost up your skill damage, so try to pick this up whenever you can and definitely make sure this is above all the rest. But yeah, ultimately an amazing early game build. Late game, I think you may have to switch some things around, reset a little bit of the skill tree because we're going to be so close range. I don't know how this is going to work in those nightmare dungeons. But for early game, this is a lot of fun. Tears through the content and it's definitely one of the best beginner builds I've seen. As always, hopefully that's helped a few of you guys and girls out. For all things gaming, take care. I'll see you on the next day.